So let's go over some napping nightmares. And one of the things a lot of, you know, first time nappers or folks who've been doing it for a couple of years will experience is a kind of a unique flake that uh, poses some problems. This flake, I call the turtle shell or the turtle back. Essentially, it's a flake that's popped off of a large spall that is flat on one side and rounded across the top. Now this flake definitely poses some problems for folks because they say, how do I get to the stone, to the mass? So any turtle shell you could come across, they're all kind of universal. They have relatively one flat side and they have that hump or that mound where a majority of that stone sits. You can get some long shaped ones. These are definitely a little bit longer when you compare it to this piece of stone. This one still has material that you can work in and you don't really want to throw this out or throw it into the debutage pile. You actually want to approach it in a way where it's like, I have a long point here, I have a long blade, I have a long tool that I can make out of this stone. Let's attack this stone right here. So a couple fundamental properties of the stone. It's flat on the bottom and it's rounded on the top. Sometimes you can have a flat side on there. Now to do this, all you have to think about is how do I take this edge here and raise it up to here to attack my stone? We all know where the center line is. It's that imaginary line that kind of cuts right through this stone that separates the bottom from the top. I have to remember, I always want to hit stone. If I hit the cortex, which is all of this here and all of this here, it's always going to be a little bit softer and it's going to give me a different strike dynamic. So what I need to do is I need to chip away at this cortex, take my edge from here and start to raise it up. This is a spot I want to attack first, this, this tapered down side. Because even when I will look at the stone this way, these lateral sides have some good mass. But if I flip it this way, I have less that I need to get to here when I'm trying to raise my edge. So it allows me to take more of this stone off here to raise my edge up. All I'm gonna do is start working a hard hammer stone on this tapering edge of the stone to raise this edge up to try to get above my center line to attack the stone on the top. So I'm just taking small chips, small hits. It's like a strike and an abrasion all in one. Once I've got a good spot and I know my edge is raised, you can see this was once my edge down here and I've raised it up to here. I'm gonna flip my stone over. And what I have is exposed stone that's gonna act as my platform. This whole edge right here is my new platform. You can kind of see the stone rising above. It gives me the opportunity to strike stone, not cortex, and throw a flake. Now with this, you can use a copper billet, you can use a piece of stone. For this sort of strike, I like to use a flat hammer stone. It gives me the opportunity to smack the stone. So I'm driving those flakes up. Now you're gonna chip away at this top. And this is kind of a funky little cortex, but as I strike, it's giving me new opportunities to hit. New platform there. It looks like there's one over here. So just take your hammer stone and do the exact same thing raising that edge. I've got a good platform here, a little bit of abrasion, piece of stone comes off. That was the flake that was sitting on the top and as you can see even when I just pop this off I'm starting to reduce the amount of stone that's sitting on the top of this little turtle shell give me an opportunity to use it as you know some sort of flake for a projectile. Another big flake. Our mass, our mass was on the top, and with one strike, I'm now reducing it. I'm slowly cutting away at this mass up here, and I keep attacking. Let's use this corner, this potential platform. As a way to attack this chunk. Let's do another soft hammer. It broke apart, no big deal, but it's shh. But now it's shot across here. Now once you start to reduce the mass on the top, you always have to be thinking about this new edge that you're establishing. So all I'm gonna do is go back around and try and raise this edge up a little bit more. Essentially I'm kind of starting over, but with each strike across, 
it's given me a little bit higher edge. That edge allows me to aim for all of this stone and this mass at the top. Good flake right across. That one was sitting here. That was my platform. Give it a strike right across. Again, we're always looking to raise these edges to get to the mass of the stone that's at the top. So as we're moving through, you can already see that mound that was across the top, that, that turtle back, that turtle shell is slowly reducing. And with each strike, if done properly, attacking it from that tapered outside, you can start to throw some long flakes. Now the reason why this works to get this sort of result is there's a lot of stone on the top. Shock waves like to travel through the stone and where there is stone, you'll get a good clean flake, but more importantly, you'll be removing the mass off of the top of that turtle shell. Right, let's give this a pop. There we go. Another one right across the top. And if we keep looking at it in profile, we can see how much thinner that flake is getting. All about thinning and reducing that shell on the back. There we go. Give that guy a pop right across. Now we still have some of this mass right here, but we're starting to thin this guy out. This stone used to look something similar to this, a flat side on the back, a big mound, and then one tapered out end. Still have some cortex back here that I'm gonna thin, but if you think about the underbelly of this stone, how it looked before, I haven't lost too much of the lateral side or the length. You're always gonna lose some when you're dealing with some of these turtle shells and shell backs, but eh, it's just part of the game. Go for this mass right back here. There we go. There we go. Flat hammerstone. Now just looking at this guy, yeah, it's still twisted and it's still through that thinning phase. However, we removed most of that stone that was across creating that shell. And now we have a piece that we can approach just like any kind of standard flake, a little bit more mass on one side, ultimately reducing it down into some projectile point. When everything's said and done, just a quick little laurel leaf point. This really isn't about the point. It's more about taking a piece of stone like this that has all the mass on the top, thinning it out through very specific strikes and producing some sort of projectile that you can use. We don't need to throw these away. We don't need to set them off to the side and think I'm never gonna get to it. Napping turtle backs or shell backs or anything to this extent is totally doable. Just remember to identify that tapered out end, the thinnest end, Start to take some mass and chunks off that edge, flip it upside down, give it a few whacks, and see what you can come up with. More importantly, some of the flakes that come from that mass can also be turned into projectile points. That is one of the flint napping nightmares that I think people come across pretty routinely. So don't throw out your turtle backs or your shell backs. Find that tapered end, abrade it, flip it, whack it. Before you know it, all that junk stone that you would typically throw away, you can turn in little projectiles and elevate your napping. All right, appreciate you watching.